You are listening to the Hiking Radio Network, where we talk the walk with shows by hikers about hikers for everybody. Mighty Blue on the Appalachian Trail, the ultimate midlife crisis. Join Steve and his guests every week as he staggers from Georgia to Maine. Welcome back to the third installment of our Southwest Coast Path journey. Um, not the Appalachian Trail for the next couple of months. And I'm here in Devon and Cornwall walking the Southwest Coast Path. Trying to raise money for Parenting Matters. And for those of you who already contributed, I really appreciate that. And most of you, by the time you hear this, hopefully would have received your pictures of me <laughs> tracing your name in the sand and thanking you for the donation. It's been another um, wonderful, glorious three days in many ways and tough in other ways. I've, I've had a um, another tricky day. <laughs> um, the, the last day, um, I'm actually now having a day off. On day number 10 was was a, is a day off. But, you know, this isn't quite how I planned it. But nearly, I'm nearly up to date with the plan, but... You know, I think you've got to be prepared to make changes as you go along, and, and I've been certainly been prepared to do that, and and enjoyed doing that. To be honest with you, you can do things on the fly, which sometimes life doesn't allow you to do. Um, and when you're hiking, you can do this stuff. And, and I've I've done pretty well so far. I'm about 99 miles in, so I'm I'm happy with what I've done. But so we're going to start now with uh, day number eight. Day 8, Bidford, to 2.5 miles past Westwood Ho, a total of 10.5 miles. I didn't have a good start yesterday. <laughs> oh, by the way, I don't know whether you can hear it, but I'm sitting on a cliff top with virtually no breeze, so hopefully you can hear this, not, hear this well, um, and just the very gentle water lapping down below me. It's glorious, and I've got the sun in my on my right right side i'm recording this on day nine actually beginning of, beginning of day nine but yesterday was not a good start i was heading back to the path after breakfast and i just reached i think it was nearly half a mile away from where i stayed at the lovely mount house the night before when i got a phone call from the proprietor and i had left my towel <laughs> in the room i check rooms pretty thoroughly when i leave and you how, how difficult is it to miss this Darn great towel, which I draped over a chair. Anyway, I kind of deliberated whether to go back or not. You know, I hate going back on steps. But um, the um, proprietor, before I could make a decision, he said he'd, he was coming down anyway with his dog, so he'd uh, bring it with him. And he did. And I sat at the pannier pantry and had a cup of tea while he drove down and um, handed it to me. So as a consequence, I didn't actually get started till 10.30 yesterday. But I knew I wasn't walking too far. My intention was to walk the eight miles into um, Westwood Ho, which was my plan on my schedule on this 52-day schedule to be here at this time. Um, but I was going to I was going to wild camp, so I had to walk another couple of a couple of miles out to find the wild camp. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So as I say, it didn't get started till 10:30. The path was through quite a urban area again and the paths have been in and out of urban areas and it's okay um but then we passed through some they were i don't know whether they were private roads but they were certainly um uh they were they were, they were allowing the southwest coast path walkers to negotiate them because uh, but there were some magnificent houses with elevated views of the water my gosh it must be lovely to live there it's far better signposted getting out of town, which is very helpful. And then um, we entered some National Trust property called Burrow Farm. And National Trust is an organisation which basically is a land conservancy and looks after properties and areas of land for the public, which you've got to say is quite a, quite a, um, a great endeavour to support. 
Once we left town, the path went through some woodland, which is always nice, with birds twittering away really loudly. It was absolutely gorgeous. After Bideford, you get to Appledore, which is about, I don't know, two, about three miles after Bideford. And you're walking past really quaint, colourful little cottages right on the water. And the roads are incredibly narrow. You can only get one car down there at the time, I think. Um, I had a sausage and bacon baguette at a neat little coffee shop on the on the seafront and um, and headed out once more. As you leave Appledore, the path leads into a very exposed but beautiful northern boroughs. It's, no, it's northern, northern boroughs country park um, with a... It had a lovely seaside feel. It was kind of very exposed. There were plenty of people out there walking their dogs. Sheep were grazing. Dogs were running around excitedly looking for a confrontation. But it had it took me back to memories of when I used to go on holiday in Wales, which actually I'm not too far from right now, actually, with wide open spaces, pure public land for people to wander on as they see, where, see, fit, see fit, and, you know, it's something for everybody there. And heading further into the country park, the sheep multiplied by a factor of 10. And I heard and saw this white horse making a making quite a fuss, actually, at the top of a rise. And it was looking at me. I didn't, wasn't very happy about that. But um, because a, a, a gate on the field which the horse was supposed to be in said danger. Um, and I presume it's because of because of the horse. Yet you walk past the fence, and the field's wide open again. <laughs> so I, don't, I have no idea how, how, how that's worked out. Um, and I know it's flat, but you know what? It was quite an extensive walk, probably about three or four miles, three miles, yeah, about three miles, I guess. And it was far nicer than those those previous rail paths I've walked. I love seeing all the birds. Even seen the golfers because it was I think it's the Royal North Devon Golf Club we were we were surround we were going around and um, you know I skirted the golf course. Eventually I reached Westwood Ho at around 2:30 p.m., which was way too early for me because it doesn't get dark till 8:30 and I intended to go only about another two and a half miles. Well, it turned out I went two and a half miles. I intended to go a few more miles to find somewhere to um, put, set my tent up. And to be frank, at first sight, Westwood Ho seemed a little bit tacky to me, um, very much like South End where I used to live, actually. <laughs> and I and I checked for a decent place to stop for a couple of hours to eat and recharge my, my, my phone and my watch. And the... The eating was going to be really my last meal of the day, so I didn't want to eat too early. And I eventually found a place on the edge of town called the Pier House, on the edge going out of town, actually. It was wonderful. So pleased I found it. Um, I highly recommend it. I had a cider shandy, which is half a Sprite and half a cider. I really want to be careful drinking uh, here. Uh, I wouldn't drink heavily anyway, but I don't need that much. So I had a side of shandy and I ordered some, I think, crispy beef, which was very, very tasty. I just hung out there for about, I don't know, <laughs> two and a half hours later, maybe, yeah, about two and a half hours later. Um, chatted to a couple of people and uh, I headed out around five o'clock, which was still too early to camp. But, you know, I thought I'd get out and take my time and relax and as I say, it, it, the, the, the concern for me, because I've only started doing this, this camping thing, uh, you know, for this trip anyway, is when, where am I going to actually find someone to, to put my tent? So far, it hasn't been a problem, and I've found two great places. As I left the pier house, there's an open field, and I suppose I could have gone there, but it seemed to expose to me especially with people walking around, especially on the outskirts of town, people go walking in the evening and then come back. I didn't want to be there then. I headed for a little bit further up and another runner came past 
And I asked him, are there any spots a bit further on? He said, yeah, there's some places called, I think it's Abbotsham Fields. And I carried on walking and I found a nice little spot. But, I, but the guide said to me, just over the crest of that hill is a really nice spot to go. So I followed his advice and went up the hill, which was an easy climb, wasn't a problem at all. And I descended into this kind of mini valley on the edge of the cliff um, with a hill to my left, hill to my right. And uh, I found this spot by another bench. Happy, happy days. So I set up my tent and I sat in my chair because I've got one of these, uh, what's it called, Helox? He, something or other, chair and read for about, I don't know, hour and a half, hour. The wind started to get up and it really started to get up. Luckily, I'd already set my tent up and it was pretty firm. You know, it, it, it's looking in good condition right now as well. And I got into the tent at about seven o'clock and watched a movie on Netflix. I'll tell you, El Schaefer never had any of this, of course. <laughs> but to be able to watch Netflix in your tent while you're wild camping is a special treat. And I, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. The wind died down, fortunately, and uh, I slept pretty darn well all night. But that was the end of day number eight. Day nine, a couple of miles beyond Westward Ho, camping in an open field, to Clavelli. It says only about nine miles, but I'm sure it was more than that. I think I, my watch told me I walked 10 miles. Anyway, currently I'm 99 miles into the trip. It was, you know, it was, it, it was a record, it was, it was a beautiful day um, when I woke up. Uh, I, the wind had died down during the night which I was grateful for because it had been blowing around quite badly, but it died down quite well. And I thought to myself, I'll record here, because I hadn't actually recorded the night before. So I recorded the previous day, um, sitting on my bench, um, just looking out to sea, and I was really feeling the place and, and feeling great myself as well. I'd slept fairly well. Um, I, I think I woke up about four-ish, having gone to sleep at about nine and then I dozed for another couple of hours before getting up. Eventually uh, I left at about 8 p.m. I think it was and I'd seen just one person come past just as I left so I'd been on that at that spot for oh I don't know probably 12 hours without seeing anybody. It was beautiful absolutely beautiful down there. The path was, of course, immediately uphill, but I knew these weren't the more difficult climbs, and so it wasn't bad at all, and I, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I thought it was going to be mainly just a cliff path with a, with a good look at the sea quite regularly, but it didn't turn out quite that way. I went up and over um, a cliff called Green Cliff, which was particularly uh, steep, um, and had a matching steep climb down. And you're not going to believe this, but I promise you this is true. I was just thinking to myself, I'm on day number nine of hiking, I think it is, and I hadn't had any falls so far. Literally, <laughs> it couldn't have been more than 20, maybe 30 seconds later, I came to a muddy patch. You know, we've had a lot of rain here in the, in the, before I came out here, and there was still some pretty bad mud mud around and this one I just couldn't get round and I put my foot on it I slipped and I crashed into a gorse, a gorse bush on the other side um, had a few scrapes nothing more but you know me I shouted out number one and carried on and I don't know about you but those, those of you who hike may identify with this when you do take a fall um it unnerves me, it, it undermines my confidence, I think it is, um, and, and and it just just throws me off quite a bit. But you'll see in a minute why, why I felt that way in some ways. So 
I then carried on the path, and I was, I was much taking my time much more at this stage, thinking I do not want to fall again. This mud, this mud is going to really get me and knock me over. And I took this little turn in the in the path, which was correct. It looked like it was correct anyway. And I started climbing down, and I was on the beach. And it wasn't a, a sandy beach; it was just a little pebble beach. And I thought I must have come the wrong way. So I clambered all the way back up the stairs. And I couldn't find where I'd taken a wrong turn, so I surmised that I must have taken a right turn. So I clambered all the way back down again. And then when I just if I'd gone another two yards, three yards from my first adventure down onto the beach, I would have seen there are some steps back up. And I can see why, because there was a bit of a cleft between the two cliffs. And we wouldn't have been able, been able to get across there, so we had to go down to the beach and then back up again. And that fall, you know, for the next hour, was very tough mentally on me. I don't think I've had any problems with that in this trip so far, but I really was, was struggling. And it, it, it had unnerved me. I just wasn't feeling quite right again. Nothing wrong with my heart this time, by the way. That's been absolutely fine, no, no problem since. And when I looked across at Clavelli, I could see where I was heading. It didn't look like it was any closer. <laughs> so... I was getting concerned, um, you know, and I, I'd not really thought about this much before, but it is funny how confidence can play such a big part in a hike. When you're going well, when you feel well, it, it's all darn good. And I started then to really, really struggle. And I couldn't un really understand why, but I was stopping every 20 yards or so, um, and I was out of breath. I had no energy of at all. And then, of course... I realized why. I hadn't had enough food. The previous day, I'd had a sausage and bacon baguette at about 10 a.m. And I had a late lunch, which was meant to be an early dinner. I just had a, a, an appetizer of crispy beef. No vegetables or anything like that. And, and I hadn't had anything to eat since then, apart from a few nuts. And... You know, I always tell people, make sure you get enough food, make sure you get enough water. I didn't have enough water, by the way. After my, my coffee in the morning at, back at the, the, the camping spot, I had less than half a litre. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll get there. I'll, there'll be somewhere I can re get some more water. There was a little stop off about three or four miles ahead. I'll tell you about that in a minute. <laughs> and, I, and as I was berating myself over this terrible lack of foresight on my part, um a true bit of trail magic happened. This hiker came past, and he just looked at me, and I said, and he asked how I was. And you don't normally do that. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, mate, but I'm struggling. I don't know why I've got no energy at all. And he said, oh, I've, I've got plenty of food in here. Um, do you want, um, and he gave me a, um, a jacket potato with a bit of cheese stuffed inside it, and a Snickers, of course, with my favourite food. And it's, it's, that is trail magic. Trail magic isn't a feed where there's an organised feed where someone turns up and feeds every, everybody, which is lovely, by the way. Trail magic is that serendipitous moment. Just when I needed something to happen to me, this guy came along and he helped me through my day. And immediately I perked up again. I, mean, I was still short of water, but that's the way it goes. Where I was hoping to resupply with water was a little village, hardly call it a village, it was tiny, called Buck Mills. And I came down the hill into that, it looked like Buck Mills was closed for the day. There was no one there. Literally, no, I saw not a soul. There was no shop, there was nothing there. No taps on the side of houses I would have tried to nick some water. I knocked on a couple of doors, no one answered. So I had to leave Buck Mills with literally three sips of water left to do a la the last four miles. It's quite a big climb out as well, and it looked like we were rerouted around part of the woods through a meadow, but the meadow had an electrified fence. It says, please keep to the path. Well, my right hand was about a foot away from the electrified fence, and I'm holding my poles in there. Well, I swing them about a bit, so I moved my poles onto the other side. Oh, dear, that was stupid. And then we went back into the woods, and it's... You know, we, we, we literally went round this field to avoid a part of the woods where they're trying to uh, regrow certain certain trees. But uh, we were then um, 
went into a, in and out of another field, crossed a small bridge, um, and I came to a road, which was a really nice di- uh, diversion. Running across the road, I saw a, a pheasant, and I was able to take a quick picture. Now, this was the day that I was meeting my dear friends, Richard and Wendy, who live further down the coast in Bude, and they were going to come and meet me and take me home and, and slap at me for the next couple of days. Happy days, as far as I'm concerned. So I had this long downhill into Clovelly, or near Clovelly rather, near Clovelly, and right near the bottom, I saw Rich and Wendy walking up to me. Uh, as always, it's great to see them. It's great to see dear friends. And they, they didn't persuade me. They said, you know, why don't you take tomorrow off, uh, which is today. I'm actually recording from their garden right now because I'm actually having a zero day today because, frankly, I haven't had a zero day yet. So nine straight days of hiking has been fun. I'm 99 miles into it. and I think I'm doing okay made some stupid mistakes but you know readjusting your plans on the fly is how you're meant to hike so i'm okay with that you know i'm here i'm enjoying their, their company we're going to a quiz night in the pub tonight so really there is no day number 10 uh number 10 to talk about after this because um i'm with them with my friends we've been down to the beach today i've uh, traced a couple of people's names in the sand for our Parenting Matters um, charity, thanking them for their donation. And that's been fun. And I've bought um, some meals and some snacks, which, of course, I need. I must remember to keep my, get my snacks. Bought a new um, uh, gas canister to fit my jet ball flash. The other one was way too big, so that's helpful to me. Just getting a few things. Got my mug, which I'd lost. Uh, so I'm ready to go. And then tomorrow I'll be out again going back to Clavelli and then walking, I think it's only about 10 miles for that one, they'll come and pick me up again, uh, and then I'll be doing that for the next few days and be back here. But that is the end of, end of really day number nine and number 10.